Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Coding Segments. Today we are going to go over five different types of loops. For loops, while loops, do while loops, infinite loops, and for each loops. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. So we're gonna start with making a for loop. For loops are a little more complex of a loop. There's three key factors to a for loop. So starting out, you have to say for. Um, then you have to uh, declare a counter. Now we're going to initialize a counter. Typically you go with I, that's just convention for Java. Why? I'm not sure. That's just how it's always been. Then we have to say an exit condition. So we're going to stop when I is greater than five. So while I is less than five, it'll continue doing this loop. And then after the exit condition, we have to say how much are we going to be incrementing by? In this case, we're going to increment by one. This short notation plus plus will after every incrementation, we'll do plus one to our counter. So if it's i equals zero, it'll go to one. If i equals one, it'll go to two, and so forth and so on. So a for loop is composed of three parts. So it's for, and then our in, uh, declared counter. It doesn't have to be initialized. There's a difference between declared and initialization. Uh, initialization is creating the new variable entirely, while declaring it is actually giving it a variable. Uh, declared variable, uh, it's exit to condition, and lastly, uh, counter incrementation. Now, when would I not do plus plus? Say I want to fill in only even items, so I'd say i plus equals 2, and I'll always go up by 2 in this case, but we just want 1 for now. So we're going to do this loop five times and we're going to just input items so we need a, in order to input we need to create a scanner so let's create that uh, scanner we're going to call it scan equals a new scanner and put in its parameters that system dot in that way whatever we type into console it'll read saying we add us because we don't have an import so that's an easy fix just hover over and the IDEs will typically handle it for you in this case, we just want to import, and voila, that error is gone. We got a yellow line. No, not typically do we have to worry about yellow. It's mad about two different things. One, we never use this thing, and two, usually it wants you to close it. But we'll worry about that later. So we're going to type out some instructions to the console so we know what we're doing. So a simple print statement, we're going to use print line so it's a different line every time. And we're going to say enter a name. Okay. And then we're going to print out. Uh, then we're going to read in whatever the user types in actually. So we need to save that to a location. So we need to create a string. And we're going to call it what? Typed value. Let's just call it value. How about that? value equals new string. Why am I doing that? We just need to say string. So in this case, I'm declaring it to be empty while initializing it. But all I really need to do is just initialize it. So we'll just get rid of all that. Okay, and then we're going to say value equals scan.next. So whatever I type in next, value is going to equal that. Okay, and then we're going to repeat saying what I typed in. Print line. Uh, you entered the name such and such. Then we're going to put a blank line so it's nice and neat. All right, let's run this code and see what happens. What I what should happen is is I need to type in five values and it'll tell me what I typed in and it should execute five times. All right, we need to enter a name. Let's say George. You have entered the name. Oh, I forgot a piece. Yep, I didn't actually tell it to print out the actual name. So let's just uh, terminate that and add in that one thing. So remember, we store it to value, so now it's going to append value to that string and print it out for us. All right, let's retry that again. Enter a name, okay, George. And I have entered the name George, cool. Okay, how about Henry? Enter the name Henry, okay, Phil, Claire, uh, Stacy. K. 
okay, cool. And um, it terminated. So it did it five times. That's great. And that's what for loops allow you to do. Repeating processes a number of times and you can specify that amount. So if I want to do this three times, I change it to three. If I want to do it once for whatever reason, do it a one. No reason for the for loop at this point. And just get rid of it entirely. So let's just do it again real quick with three and we can see it's going to do it less for us. Compile and run it. So John, Joe, Jerry, or Harry, how about that? And then done. Cool. That's what the power of for loops allows to do. But for loops are only great if I know how many times I'm iterating through. What if there's a case that I'm doing things I don't know how many times? Like in this case, I have a file here with full names and it could vary. I can make it seven, I can make it four. It could vary. And that's where while loops are great. While loops will allow us to dynamically change no matter what. So we're gonna redo this. Um, we're just gonna actually comp this out for now. That way you can keep it on screen. Uh, so let's create a while. Loop. So while uh, we need to reformat our scanner to read that text file for us. So we need to create a new file object. Uh, we'll call it file equals new file. In the parameters, we need to put the file name. In this case, we have names.txt. Uh, extensions are usually very important. Hardly ever will you not need an extension. It's going to be angry at us because we don't have an import again. That's fine. Just import it. ID handles it for us. Cool. And instead of typing in what I type in, I want it to read in from the file. So I just say file here and now it won't do my typing. It'll read from the actual file itself. Okay, cool. And now we're going to say while the file in this case, it's the scanner we're referring to. While there's something to read next, it's going to continue on. So as long as there's something in the file, it will continue reading. So now we're going to say uh, value equals scan.next. So it's going to equal the next value. And now we're going to say the name, system.out.println. And we want to say the name, so we need to say value, or actually the, the name read was, remember we need to append it, I messed that up last time, was value. Cool, alrighty, let's uh, now scan it in and see what it tells us. Uh, let's see, it's angry at us, why are you angry at us? cancel. I messed up up here. Oh, so I didn't add a throw uh, exception. So in case something went wrong, the computer doesn't know how to handle it. Uh, so we add a throws de declaration. That way it when, if or when it goes wrong, a lot of cases it's when, not if, uh, it knows how to handle it and can tell us, hey, something happened wrong and it doesn't totally kaput. It can actually handle itself better. All right, now let's rerun that. And hey, we can see we read in George, Harry, Phil, Stacy, Claire. Okay, does that match up to our names? George, Harry, Phil, Stacy, Claire, John, Jose. Cool. So it read in all the files and it didn't go over. Um, let's say we delete three of these or two of these, and actually, so we deleted two of them. Let's rerun it. Up. Oh, I didn't save the file though, so nothing should change. Oh no, it saved it for me. And we see I only read in those names. That's great. And that's what while loops allow us to do. It dynamically adjusts when we need it to. Otherwise, we would have to say, read in seven items, read in 12 items. Way too much work and it's not efficient. It allowed us to change it simply. Uh, you could also easily convert this while loop into a um, for loop. So while loops just have an exit condition, right? Well, what's this there's nothing much different so for loops have two extra parts a declared value value variable declared variable and a counter incrementation while they both have exit conditions and that's the key i could create a counter out here so int counter equals zero and then just increment in here counter plus plus now I've added to this while loop those two extra conditions. I declared a variable and then I incremented the variable. While loops can be for loops, but they're more dynamic and allows us to do more things. 
Um, now we can change this while loop simply to a do while. Um, in this case, it wouldn't be good practice. I would actually keep this as a while loop, but for showing, we're good. Just convert it to a do while. So it's quite simple. We're just gonna say do. It's gonna do this while it thinks on that. And then I believe the semicolon goes here. Yes. So now we should get the same result. And the reason I say we shouldn't do this is because how a do while works. So we got the same result. That's good. Do whiles does the thing first and then checks. While does the check and then does. The reason I wouldn't use a do while for this case is because I'm telling it to read in a value. What if the value is empty? So if we just delete everything in here, it should get angry at us. And yep, we got we got a null. That that's what I expected. So if we change it back to the do, or I mean just to the while, so the do while, and run it again, it should be happy. Yep, it didn't find anything because nothing was there. So it first checked and then did instead of did and then checked. Do whiles are also powerful tools in our very niche case item. Um, I would use them for like when you're inputting values by hand manually when you require at least one value in there or you have at least one condition that has to iterate, do whiles are great. If there is no conditions required or yeah, if it can range from zero to an infinite amount of times, while loops are good, do whiles are good one to infinite times. Alrighty, and then we'll talk about infinite loops. Infinite loops are a good niche thing once again. Um, infinite loops are used uh, quite a lot in applications. So this uh, IDE I'm using here, Eclipse, is in an infinite while loop right now. It's just saying while true or while open. So we're going to create a Boolean saying Boolean open equals true because it's open, right? So while open, keep asking questions. So whatever. Keep asking questions. Obviously, this isn't going to work. There's no method called keep asking questions created, but that's essentially what's going to happen. Is it's just a always true statement. Is this ever going to change? No. Now, um, some IDEs get angry when you do stuff like this while true, and then we're going to say system that out that print line um, something and let's see if it gets angry with me uh, no it's fine for now that's good so this is gonna be ugly it should forever print out something and let's see what's happening and it's forever printing out something and that's what while loops good for it continue iterations video games application things like this always implement kind of similar things just a redundancy thing that goes through each iteration over and over and over again. Um, we could easily get out of it, so um, we could add a break statement, so break and that will terminate. Um, when we had the is open statement, um, so say I want I hit the X button, then I would say open equals false, and that will um, terminate it early for us. And then afterwards, in like an application, oh, no, that's stupid because of course it's always going to equal false. Um, applications, this is good. So once I'm done playing my game, I could have an exit condition, uh, a post condition, sorry, saying save game. That way, when you close it, it saves the game and then done. Script's done. That's when you would use a what, um, infinite loop or they're not quite infinite. They're near infinite. Um, it's just a condition you don't know when an application is going to end or stop. Those are really the only cases you'll use these. Um, and then lastly, we're going to go over for each loops. So for each loops are um, very similar to for loops. Uh, let's so let's rescan in those items again, and instead of um, just leaving them hanging, we're going to store them into array list. So let's create an array list of strings. Array list. Uh, I think list is capitalized, and we're gonna call it names equals new array list 
and then bracket string, uh, angle bracket, sorry, parentheses, and then it should be angry about imports. Oops, I messed up the angle bracket there. Okay, then I need to import array list. Easy enough. Cool, we did it right. So now I have an array list of names. Array lists are great because they are dynamic in size. I can keep appending it to it, not knowing the size or structure, which is good to go with our name text file. Let's add back in those names. So I don't know how many names are gonna be in here. So I need to know, I have to dynamically size the amount of memory I need. Okay, and then we're gonna say names.add value. And now we're gonna add all the names into this array list of names. Uh, we didn't tell it what kind of uh, things this is storing here. That'll make it happy. Cool. So now we create a for each loop. Uh, for each loop is needs two parts. So we say for, and then we say the data type. So we are looking through strings. We're calling it a name. So a string and a name, or data type and then a name. Colon. And then we need to tell it where is it looking at. So we're looking in names right now. So we're grabbing each name from names. Let's comment that out so you can see what's going on. For data type, uh, then name plus name colon in what? What collection? What do I mean by collection? I just mean anything that implements the uh, enumerable collection or um, implements an enumerable interface. My bad. Uh, if you don't know what interface is or any of that kind of stuff, it's fine. It's just essentially looking through each element in a um, box of items. So in this case, we have an array list. Array lists are very similar to arrays. So go each, through each item and grabs it for us. And now we're going to say um, system.out.println print line, okay, and we're gonna print out name. Um, we're gonna say the name stored is name. So what is name referring to? It's referring to the item it's currently looking through in the for each loop. So if we go through and play this, so we can see it's reading in from our while loop. This is our while loop iterating through based on this print statement. So the name read was so George, Harry, Phil, Stacy, Claire, John. And if we scroll down, we can see that the store name is the same order as we read it in. So it's iterating through each item and allows us to do such. Um, so that's the five different loops. Um, they all have different cases and uses and they're all powerful in what they do. Um, while loops are all encompassing, but a lot simpler. Um, and I highly recommend trying out different types. Um, yeah, and that will conclude today's episode of coding segments.